Welcome to this video lecture that primarily focuses on the permanent income hypothesis. This video furthers the study in section SF1. So Milton Friedman was uh, an economist who started doing research in the 1950s, and he noticed that there's a lot of odd predictions of the Keynesian theory. So in the Keynes consumption theory, people are completely myopic. They don't think about their uh, income in future periods. So you make your decision to consume today based on your basic needs and your marginal propensity to consume out of your current this year income. Friedman noticed that it would make more sense if people were thinking about their income in the future. So you, as a student, might expect to have a lot more income in the future when you get a job, and you might not. You know, you might want to consume some of that today, take out a student loan, consume some today, and then pay back that loan in the future. And we observe a lot of this in practice. So Friedman wanted to modify the Keynesian theory to be more uh, realistic. So just a little bit of terminology. We're going to denote this E should be a superscript. So formatting error. We're going to denote expected future disposable income by y minus t. That's disposable income today. But then give it the superscript E, meaning that it's, it's income you're going to get in the future, and you've formed expectations or beliefs about what that income level will be. So in the uh, Friedman theory about consumption, your, your choice about how much to consume depends on two types of income. So we split income y here at the bottom of the slide into two parts. Permanent income, which we denote yp with the superscript, and transitory or temporary income, which we denote yt with a t superscript. Permanent income is your average expected income over your lifetime. So you basically look at your average level you've been earning, you make uh, set your beliefs about what raises you'll get in the future when you'll retire, so years when you have no income, uh, and you form your beliefs about your average expected income over your lifetime. That's your permanent income. In any given year, you won't earn exactly that average. You might be below average uh, because you got laid off for six months or because you got a huge bonus, so it could be above average. Those would be temporary income, and temporary income can be negative, as noted. So the permanent income hypothesis basically says that, again, fixing these superscripts, you're going to consume all of your permanent income because there's no real point in saving it if you're going to have the same amount of income next year. If you average 50000 a year, you can consume 50000 this year, next year, the year after that, and there's no real point saving any of that money today because you'll have it next year, uh, at least in expectation. On the other hand, your temporary income, so if you get a big windfall today, you're going to want to save that and spend a little bit each year. It doesn't Because of the declining marginal utility of consumption, you don't want to spend it all at once because you're not going to get as much utility from that one big splurge as you would by spreading it out. So the, so the theory is that the marginal propensity to consume out of temporary income, which we denote with this B, is going to be pretty close to zero. So in the, in the Friedman's theory, there's two separate marginal propensities to consume, one out of permanent income, that's close to one, and one out of temporary income, that's close to zero. We can modify the permanent income hypothesis by setting standards about how people could realistically form these beliefs. And the standard modification is that people need rational expectations. When you form your beliefs here on the left-hand side about your disposable income next year and the year after that, it has to roughly match reality. So this E uh, means expectation. This is the actual expectation, so this is actual on the right. And then on the left is your beliefs. And they need to be roughly equal to each other. You don't have to actually get it right every year because you might get laid off unexpectedly. But you have to have realistic beliefs about the probability of getting laid off. This is not particularly important to the class. What we mostly want you to get out of this video is the understanding of the permanent income hypothesis and the marginal propensities to consume out of permanent and temporary income. We can further develop and apply the permanent income hypothesis by thinking about behavior over a lifetime. There's really three periods in people's lives. There's your childhood when you don't work, by law you're not allowed to, so your income is going to be zero. Then you have years where you're working, and since you're averaging in those years when you're working with a whole bunch of zeros in childhood, your income will be above your average over your lifetime during those years. So you have the working years with high income, and then you retire and your income goes back down to zero or close to it since you're not working. So there's these three, three separate periods. And if you look at the uh, permanent income hypothesis, it presumes that every year you're going to have the same consumption. You're going to set consumption equal to YP, or at least close to that level in each year. So that means that you're going to have to take out loans when you're young, so you get student loans in college because you're not making much money. Then when you're working, you pay off those loans and start saving for retirement, so you're making more than you're consuming. And then when you're retired, you're making very little or nothing, so you consume more than you're making, and you just save all the money you've accumulated over your lifetime. So there's two questions. Remember, these are the most important part of the video. The main thing you're supposed to get out of the video is the ability to solve problems, to do economics. So you need to do these two problems. Thanks for watching the video. The answers to these are posted on my website, by the way.